Welcome to Sobcast the Podcast, where I, Christina Wolfgram, beg the question, what even is mental health? This podcast is created in collaboration with Dive Through, a mental wellness company that actually knows what they're talking about. Well, it's happening, and before it can happen anymore, I would like to to give you this trigger warning. It's a gift from me to you. Um, Even though Sobcast the podcast is about the pursuit of good mental health, we're going to be talking about some not so good mental health things like anxiety, depression, and my breakup. (laughs) Which is fine. I'm I'm fine. I hope you are fine. Um, no, I'm I'm lying. I was very I am I guess nervous about this episode, but I am wearing my armor, which includes this fake silk robe from Amazon. It makes me feel fancy. And I brushed my hair. <laughs> I'm wearing eyeliner and I'm wearing um this lip goo from Glossier and it smells like mangoes, which to me, it means it's fancy, but um, also it brings up this really specific memory, like puts me right back to this one night when I was studying abroad in college and um, my girlfriends and I were helping this guy who was very drunk. He was He was so drunk. No judgment. Happens to the best of us. I mean, never me because I'm perfect. <laughs> um. But he was very drunk, and he was also very, very tall. So he couldn't fit on the couch. So we put together all of the furniture in the living room in the flat that we were renting. Yes, it was a flat because it was in England, so obviously very exotic. And I went out and got him some chicken because I was like, when I'm drunk, or if I was ever drunk... <laughs> I need to eat and that helps me feel better. So brought him chicken. It turned out to be like the worst idea. Not the worst. Just up there. Top five. And um, he ate all the chicken, but then immediately just like threw up and seemed to get kind of lost um, in the living room trying to find the bathroom. So there was just throw up everywhere. It's just everywhere. <laughs> all up and down the stairs. And... Uh, We didn't have any carpet cleaner because, I don't know, we just didn't think of that (laughs) when we were moving in. We had lots of other cleaning supplies, but we didn't have any soap for the the carpet. So we ended up using my friend's Neutrogena grapefruit face wash. If you know, you know. And anytime I smell anything remotely fruity like that, it brings me right back um, to better times. (laughs) That was a good distraction, right? That feels like we really dealt with this. Um, Thank you for being here. Uh, I guess this episode's over now. Uh, My depression is cured and um, I'll see you later. I'll see you later. Bye. No? No? Okay, we're going to talk about this. We are gonna talk about this. It is very normal to have questions about why a relationship ended. Personally, when I see people sharing major life events on social media, I want to know details, even if I'm not even really that interested in that person. I, um, If they're experiencing a loss, I want all of the details. And I think that has a lot to do with kind of comforting myself. Like, okay, that person, you know, is in the hospital because they are allergic to bananas. (laughs) Well, I've been eating bananas for my whole life and I am fine. So I will not be experiencing that kind of craziness, I guess, is what my brain is is trying to do. And when people break up, I 
in the same way I would be like, oh, well, you know, they had just moved to Bora Bora and we all know the statistics of couples that move to Bora Bora. They're, they're really not good. So I am not part of that group. I'm fine. We're fine. So it's just proof that everything's okay. I can never make any mistakes and we'll never break up. <laughs> right? Do you relate to that? I think it's, I, I really, it's normal. It's really, really normal. And, um, it's also very tempting to try to explain to you what happened and, give you details about the end of the relationship, but I gotta be honest, I, I don't even really know what happened. So while I work on that with my therapist (laughs) and figure out why it felt like so much of a surprise and why it felt so sudden, instead, I want to talk about everything that's happened after the breakup, the grief that I've been experiencing. Um, It's a big grief, good grief. And it's had a lot of funny, honestly funny effects on my day-to-day existence. Um, You know, being with someone for so long, You know, even if you're someone with someone for not that long, there's so many little things in life that are not a big deal. They're just like so not a big deal. It's not like the key to your apartment or like your marriage license or I don't know, like a child. Um, But there are all these little things that keep you together and are just like symbols of your love. And I have been seeing those everywhere just constantly it's like um you know someone mentions quiznos and i have like 10 inside jokes with my ex-partner that i want to be like oh my god remember this quiznos thing and that's just a little quiznos cameo that's not even like big stuff so I wish I could tell you that I've been like consciously reclaiming those things as my own and starting my life fresh with uh, all of my (laughs) memories being my property and I don't even know what I'm talking about. I obviously haven't done that and that I've decided is absolutely okay, right? (sighs) grief has felt like looking through boxes of stuff in the garage and being like whoa this teddy bear from my childhood used to mean so much and now It's just a teddy bear because I'm not young and the, like, illusion is shattered. It's like, it's like watching a movie of happy and not so happy memories and realizing it that now you have to watch it in a theater by yourself. (laughs) I'm working on the metaphors, okay? (laughs) If you have any good metaphors for grief, let me know because like I said before, it really, really helps to put language to a feeling. And there's science to back that up. At least science that I saw on a TikTok once. Um, That counts, right? (sighs) There are a lot of little things that now feel like big things. His name in my messages inbox, like on my phone, when I open the app, I don't see his name first thing. I scroll down and his name's not there. And then I scroll further down 
and I have to like actively search for his name. Usually wouldn't be a big deal, but I can sense that that name is getting farther and farther down the list of people that I'm talking to on a regular basis. Like a text message from my Postmates delivery person is above his name. And you know what? That hurts my heart, okay? Hurts my heart. Um, Every time I check out anywhere uh, on the internet and I have to put my card information in, I have to uh, confirm my address and everything is still under the address that I shared with him in Los Angeles for the apartment that we lived in together as a little family, me, him, and mister. It's a part, it's an apartment I will never go back to. I've been away from it over a year and a half because we were not in Los Angeles during the pandemic or during quarantine, I should say. And that's sad. <sighs> Thank you for letting me get this out. Um, oh, my own perfume now reminds me of him. That's pretty annoying. I need new perfume. Thank goodness I always buy perfume in like the smallest container I possibly can because I don't know, it just takes me a long time to go through it. So I don't know. I think I'm going to give it away as a present or... Maybe like throw it into a river. I'm not going to throw it into a river. I care about the fish too much. But maybe do something symbolic with it. I don't know. But the smell makes me sad now. Makes me sad. Used to make me feel confident and now it makes me sad. So um, another thing that I usually love but is now causing me pain in my chest is a dinner. (sighs) Wouldn't it be so much of a problem if I didn't have to eat dinner literally every single day? But um, in the before times, uh, let's see, like BB, before breakup, BBU? BBU sounds better. Before breakup, I had dinner on my mind all the time. I think it's part of my love language or something. It's how I express that I care for people is that I like worry about whether or not they've eaten. And I think about dinner from the moment I wake up until dinner time because I want to make sure everyone gets their vegetables and hydration and that I'm prepared to make something delicious. And now I stand in front of the microwave and I wait for my Amy's mac and cheese to finish cooking and it just feels sad. I'm definitely going to cook for myself again and I actually want to pat myself on the back because I have been eating at least three meals a day every day and I've been trying to eat fruits and vegetables and and drink water. Like that's huge. I think that's pretty huge, but dinner makes me sad. There are some dates that are bothering me and I think anyone who misses A person has dates. It might be their birthday, the day they passed, the date of their um, first date, their their anniversary. Um, And for me, it's been June 15th because we decided in May, maybe even earlier than May, that We were going to leave his family's house in New Mexico and we were going to go back to Los Angeles, back to our apartment, back to our normal lives. 
and we were going to do it together and it was going to be hard, but we were going to be together. And we were both really nervous because Los Angeles hasn't felt safe to us. That might be over dramatic, but it didn't feel safe for us for the whole year. And we were going to face that together. And, um, weirdly, super weirdly, on June 15th, I signed a lease for the apartment that I'm in (laughs) instead of going back to Los Angeles. There have been a lot of coincidences like that, and I'm choosing to put meaning to them because otherwise I will lose my mind. Even, um the ticket that I used to get from New Mexico to Portland, where I am now. The only reason that I, well, sorry. (laughs) The ticket that I used to get from New Mexico to Portland was actually paid for by my past self. We had planned to travel from Los Angeles to New Mexico at the beginning of March 2020. And things started happening. Things were getting scary. So we decided to drive instead. And then we ended up staying there for forever. But um, I got a refund on my plane ticket and... It was almost the exact amount that I needed to get here to come see one of my best friends who has basically been taking care of me like I'm a little baby and she's wonderful. I paid $20 for the ticket. It felt really possible because I had that credit. Divine timing. Divine timing. Another big step has been that um, I've been reevaluating where my boundaries are because I'm an adult. (laughs) I'm an adult who has been to a lot of therapy and I know a lot about boundaries and now it's probably time to put some of those in action. You know what I'm saying? My ex and I always had our location sharing services on. One, because then we wouldn't have to constantly text each other like, where are you? Because we both had jobs where we're just kind of all over the place and you never know. But over time, it really took on a sweet significance because it allowed us to check in on each other. So I would like stop by Trader Joe's on the way home and he'd text me and be like, enjoy Trader Joe's or like, I see you're at Trader Joe's, which is a small thing that now feels gigantic. That's, that's something that grief is. It's like putting a magnifying glass to all of these mundane things. It was just a way to be like, I'm thinking about you. And, um, the last time we spoke, we talked about how neither of us were ready to turn that off yet. So I've been checking in on him once in a while. And you know what? It has, it is a kind of strangely productive way of checking in on someone because I don't have to text him and be like, you're on my mind, which would be, you know, kind of opening up a door for us to be talking or for me to be just wondering how he feels about the situation when really I need to just be focusing on how I feel about the situation. Um, But the other night I uh, saw that he was at an address that I didn't know. And truly that in the grand scheme of things doesn't matter at all. But it opened a floodgate of just so many emotions and just really made me realize, like, there are going to be so many addresses that he goes to that I won't know. 
it's not my business anymore. And you know what? That makes me sad. And now I am proud of myself because I turned off my location sharing. So that was, that was like a small step. It should be so small, but it was really big. Just, um, like cutting, cutting a tie that I have to him. Wow, I just invented the phrase cutting ties. Incredible. <laughs> when I was in high school, I would do this thing when I when I got um, a car. After school, sometimes I would just drive. I had like a I had this route that I would take through different neighborhoods that connected into each other. And I would purposefully drive by the houses of guys that I had dated or really liked. Basically guys who had hurt me. And I would check to see if their car was there. <laughs> and I'd listen to sad Broadway music. Probably Memory from Cats. I was really into Memory from Cats. Big time. One time I was listening to it so loudly in the driveway, like at 10 o'clock at night, that someone called the police. I didn't want to do that with this relationship because I've learned so much since then and I've grown so much since then and I feel like I owe it to my 16 year old self to not wallow like that so even though i'm sad and i'm talking about it <laughs> i feel like i took a step away from wallowing in a healthy way so if you are wearing a hat it's a good time to take it off hats off to me I'm not the boss of you. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, even though the biggest emotion that I've been dealing with is definitely sadness. And not just sadness because, like, I miss the relationship, but sadness that I had so many plans and I really believed they were going to happen and the implications of that, like that I maybe didn't put my needs as a priority in some situations. See, this is why I need to talk to my therapist more. I don't even know. Um, but another big one is that I've just felt super angry, <laughs> which is not an emotion that I feel often. I usually go straight to sad. I pass go, I collect 200 sad dollars, and I and I am sad. <laughs> but recently I've been really angry. And I think mostly I'm angry that I feel like abandoned. I I'm angry that now I'm alone with my shit. And that now I have this opportunity to figure out what I really want. What do I want? What do I want? People keep asking me that. What do you want? Now you get to figure out what you want. I had already figured out what I wanted. <laughs> now I have to start again. Really? That makes me angry. Also, if I'm in the right mindset... Usually, like, right after I have my first coffee of the day, I'm like, I am so thankful. I get to figure out what I want. That, what a, what a huge opportunity. But, like, right now, in the evening, I am angry. Something else that has surprised me is that I, I expected to feel very empty like to feel like something huge was missing in my life. And what I have found instead is that almost all the time 
even after like the two months that it's been, I actually feel like filled to bursting with all of these emotions and things that I would have casually talked about at lunch and the affection that I have to give that now I'm just, I guess I'm just bothering Mr. The Cat with a lot. It's, it's actually too much (laughs) and it makes my heart, like it literally makes it hard to breathe because I don't know where to put it. It makes me super understand why now would be a good time to have, like, a rebound. There's just so many feelings and, like, I could just be slapping those on somebody. But, um, I think that would just make me feel bad. I think I would, like, immediately want to be alone. (laughs) Like, I would go on a date and just immediately want to be by myself. So... I'm not going to put that on somebody else right now, but I do find that interesting that I've always thought that grief was a lack and what it really is, is an avalanche. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> so those feelings that I have... So I feel this abundance of feelings and they have come out, they've like escaped out of me in some kind of unexpected ways. Um, For instance, a couple weeks ago, uh, I had someone from State Farm call me because I needed renter's insurance because that's a thing I have now because I'm renting in Portland and they need you to have renter's insurance and I'm an adult so now I have renter's insurance and this State Farm agent called me, I think, to try to sell me life insurance or car insurance but what ended up happening was um, what should have been like a two minute call turned into like an hour long phone call because I just like could not stop talking. (laughs) And asking him questions. I just, like, wanted to know what someone else's life was like. Escape for a second. So, yeah, we talked for a whole hour. And then he offered me a job. (laughs) So weird. (laughs) I think... Not being able to shut up has been a symptom of grief. I feel so weird all the time. I feel like physically weird, not just that feeling in my chest, but like I swear my brain is overloaded. Overloaded. It's overloaded. Here was the loading line and we are way over it. And... I feel so uncomfortable in my own body that I just assume I'm acting super uncomfortable on the outside. I have no idea whether or not that's true, but I want to explain myself before anyone notices. So within like two minutes of meeting someone, I'm like, yeah, hey, it's so nice to meet you. I actually just moved to Portland because my long-term partner broke up with me and it was a surprise. And so I don't want to go back to Los Angeles because that would remind me too much of what I've lost. So I'm here now. TMI. (laughs) I don't... It's a... I've realized that there's kind of this cycle of vulnerability and I've narrowed it down to this, but I'd love to hear your opinion. First, I feel really weird. So then I over explain to people so that they know why I'm acting weird. Then... They're nice people and they ask me questions or they don't. And I end up telling them details and I wonder if it's been too many details. And I get like to the fourth 
step, which is that I'm super anxious that I shared too much and if that was necessary and if I ruined my chance at a new friendship. And then that leads me to feeling really weird. And then the next person I meet, I feel like I have to explain why I'm acting weird. And then I tell them about it. And then I worry that I've given them too many details. And then I feel really weird. And it's just this cycle again and again. And heck, I might feel that right after recording this. Even though it does make me feel less alone and it makes me feel productive and creative to be telling you all of this. <laughs> anyway, I'm lucky because I've been training for this my entire life. I've always had instances where I have felt over overwhelmingly anxious and I have always been testing that line between sadness and depression. I also know that if I eat three meals a day, I'll avoid getting a migraine. And, you know, migraines easily can push me over the edge right into like a week-long depression. But there are good things. I have a Mr. Hair in my nose. That's a good thing. Tickly, but good. I know I'm going to be okay. In fact, in a lot of ways, I already am okay. It's just going to be a different okay. And I'm working on accepting that. Wow, I just got through all of that without bursting into tears. This is a big step. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I hope that if you've experienced heartbreak and grief and it has turned little tiny anthills into gigantic Everest mountains, that this makes you feel a little less alone, more normal. We're all so normal is the thing. We're, just, we're so normal. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It would super help if you subscribed, left a review, call your grandma, tell her to listen. And if you want more, Sobcast the podcast, follow us on Instagram. All right. See you next week. Love you. Bye.